So, hello guys, my name is Max, and welcome to this video today. We are going to finish the creation of our Flappy Bird clone. I just want to start to apologize for the lack of content uh, during the last few weeks, but I've been busy creating other stuff and haven't had time to upload any videos. And uh, hopefully from now on, I will continue to upload weekly videos. But anyway, without any further ado, let's continue with our Flappy Bird game. So, we've lost the last time. We just got the basics, so to speak, splash state and game state going. So we can, we got this message here, and then we can press on the screen, or on, on the canvas rather, and the bird jumps like this. We can move between pipes and stuff like that, but when we got hits, yeah, the bird dies and stuff like that. So today, we're mainly going to implement the end score, sorry, the score state, and wrap this game up, and uh, then port it using Cocoon S to Android or Android. I don't know how to pronounce that in English, but anyway. Uh, yeah, so let's go into our project here, uh, this index file and the spray.js file that we had in the previous video. Uh, and yeah, so today we're going to use the fields like here, we want to use the text field, the score field here, or the variables rather. And we have the game over text and stuff like that. Yeah, so let's start by drawing those to the canvas maybe. So you can just go all the way down here through random method. And after here we have checked if the game state is the splash state. We can check if the uh, state is the what do you say the, the score state. If it is then we basically also want to draw the, the game over text to the canvas. So we say game over draw like that and we we'll draw to the context of course. And we take this half of the width of the window, so width 2 here minus the half of the width of the game over text. So that should be like this. Uh, sorry, uh, the width of course divided by 2, like that. And then I've checked these uh, positions earlier here today, but so the height minus 400, 400 pixels is pretty good for the white position. So let's see what that looks like. Yeah, so now I have the game over text written out. But we also want to have this sort of the scoreboard drawn as well. So we just uh, can we just copy this line down. It's pretty similar, I think. So instead of score text here, uh, sorry, s underscore text and stuff like that, we want to draw the, uh, the score sprite. And the same. And instead of, instead of the width of the game over text, we want to have the width of the uh, same sprite. That is. And for the y position, take the height minus 340 pixels. That should look something like this. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And we also want to draw this sort of OK button down here so we can press to continue to the next state and stuff like that. But we want to draw it um, here in the same way as we have done here, since we need to check later if. Uh, if sorry, our mouse press is inside of that particular button or that OK button, then it's better to create this sort of object where we, where we, yeah, with the button. So we can go all the way up here, I guess, over the bird, something like that, and let's create this OK button object like so. And here it will need an X position. That will, of course, be. Oh, so we can't actually instantiated up here. So we just create a variable here. Then we'll actually instantiate it here down here in the main method. Since we'll need to use the width and stuff like that and we haven't instantiated it until we have called the main method, yeah then it's then we need to instantiate it or initialize uh, down in the main method function order. Anyway, so we just go down here after we have set the fill style. And yeah, down here we can set the OK button to a new object. Yeah, so that. Anyway, so the X position, that will just be the, the width. We can do it like this this time. Width minus the width of the, I think we call it something like, uh, yeah, the width of, of this sprite here, the OK sprite. So S buttons, OK, like that, OK. So. Uh, width here, and then just divide up by 2 to center it, and the Y position 
let's take the height minus uh, 200 pixels. And then we also need a width. And that's just the width of the K button. Like that. And then we also have the height here. So that is uh, uh, OK, the height. Like that. So I have that done. And then, then let's just draw it. So we go down. Also here we draw the scoreboard sprite. And we just call uh, buttons OK. Let's draw like that. And we'll draw to the context, of course. I want to wrote on the OK button dot X position and OK button dot the Y position. So let's see what that looks like if it works. Yeah. So we have that done. So that's cool. And yeah. So now basically we can check if we press on the button. And to do that, we go up here again to the on press function. And here we check if the the switch statement and where we check it is the score state then we basically just want to take out the mouse position or the click position um, and check if that is inside of the uh, of the OK button so the, the X position you can just take uh, the offset uh, sorry the event dot offset X position and for the Y position we take event.offset y, like that. And this will work in most of the browsers. I don't think it will work in Firefox, since they have something like layer x and layer y instead. So if you're on Firefox, just make sure that you say layer here instead. So this is probably not that good method uh, to use, only use like this to figure out the position. We should probably use some more uh, sort of uh, foolproof way. And a link to this post will be in the description. But anyway, this guy here I figure out this sort of function where you can calculate the mouse position. And here, we, yeah, here we say that layer X Y is uh, deprecated in uh, WebKit, but <laughs> Firefox it doesn't ha even have offsets X and Y. Anyway, so that makes stuff like this a bit stupid and or to figure out how it should be. But I, I'm Chrome, so I will just use offset X and Y during this simple, uh, yeah, clone or something like that. Anyway, and then we just check if MX or MI is inside, sorry, if the X and Y position is inside of the OK button. So we just say if uh, OK button uh, dot X is smaller than MX and MX is smaller and OK button dot X plus OK button dot width, like that. Then we also need to check the Y position, of course. So MY, and MY is smaller than OK button dot Y plus OK button dot height, like that. Then we just want to uh, reset the pipes. As we say, pipes dot reset, I think. Yep. And we also want to sort of set the current state to the splash state. So you say states dot splash like that. And yeah. And we, oh yeah, and we also want to set the score here to uh, zero, of course. We haven't uh, incre incremented the score yet, but anyway, we want to make sure that we set it to to zero uh, when we go back to the splash state. Yeah. So, if we just save this and reload it, um, the pipe shouldn't be resetted, but because I think we have missed uh, that implemented that method. But if I yeah, if I just die here, you can see that I can press OK and we go come to this state at least. Yeah, and then we should all <laughs> we will die all the time here. Anyway, uh, so let's just implement this uh, reset method here, and that's pretty simple. We just want to empty the pipe, sorry, like that. And let's see if that looks now. Yeah, so, so that's it. Yeah, so that's actually um, almost a complete game there. Um, the final thing to do is perhaps to uh, implement the score or the, yeah, display the score. Uh, yeah, so let's do that. 
can start by incrementing, incrementing the score. You can just do it right here, I guess. Yeah, that's good. So you can just say if, I can just actually say it like this, score plus equals. And you can use this turn operator here. Yeah? And then we just check if the uh, pipe's x position is the same as the bird's x position. They want to increment it with 1, else we want to increment it with 0. Or not increment it at all, that is. So, the, the score is now updated uh, each time we go through our pipes. Then let's just draw it. So, we want to draw the score uh, right here each time, or in uh, both the splash state and in the, what do you say, in the game state, but not in the score state, so we can just set, set an else statement right here. And then we just have a number, I think I called it like that. Yeah, so I have the, uh, the small numbers and we have the big numbers. And if you look in this, in this sprite sheet here, this is of course the big numbers and this is the small numbers here. And I just implemented this uh, simple uh, met, uh, method here uh, where we can draw the numbers to the canvas. Uh, yeah, so let's just use the. Um, yeah, so let's use this method with the big score, I think, to draw the first score here, or the score in the, in the splash state and the game state. So we just take it like that. Then for the x position, let's just take the width 2 for now. And for the y position, let's say 20. And for the number, we want to draw the score, of course. And, oh, yeah. I think that's it. And I also think that we need the context to draw the numbers. Yeah, so now we have the, the, the score drawn up there. And uh, now when we pass through the pipes, I should hopefully comment. Yeah, you can see that it goes up like that. Well, as you can see, it isn't very centered. Uh, we want to center it in the middle of the canvas. So let's do that. Uh, so to do that, we can just add an additional fill here. We can call it center, like that. And then down here we can say uh, if center, then we want to set x position uh, to uh, the center. Yeah. Uh, what should it be? Minus or plus here? Yeah, minus, I think. Yeah, minus. Minus the length of the number string, so num uh, number dot length like that, uh, times the step size actually. So we need to instantiate the step size before we uh, recalculate the x position, like that. And we also want to subtract two pixels here, since, uh, yeah, you can figure that out by yourself, but we want to. Uh, only have the width of the last letter, and not uh, the actual padding width. So that's why we subtract two from the from the step size there, or from the actual uh, x position. So we can see if that works. So instead of the x position here, we can say no or something like that. And then we just take the center position. So that's the width two. The imp implementation we have done. So the text should now be completely centered. Let's just see if I can get over 10 score here. I don't think I can do that, so let's just go like 100 and see what that looks like. Well, it's not really, oh, for, I forgot that. We need to, of course, uh, we want to, of course, uh, divide this by two. <laughs> That's so stupid. And then we also want to, mm, yeah, we want to do it like this. We want to subtract 2 right here, then we want to divide it by 2. Like that, let's see it now. Yeah, now it's uh, completely centered in the middle of the canvas. Cool. Uh, let's, let's go back to the score field here. And uh, yeah, so the final thing to do is just to draw the small uh, score, score numbers uh, on top of the scoreboard sprites. So for that, as I said, I have uh, uh, yeah, figured out these coordinates before here. Uh, so for x position, 
and that's what we need a width 2 minus uh, 47 <laughs> and that took some trial and error to figure out that number and uh, and from my position take the height minus 304 pixels and we want to draw this cortex of course like that and we don't want to center it but we want to pad it by 10 or offset it by 10 and uh, what that is will be clear in a moment here and then we'll we also want to draw the best score and that position we want to set to my, uh, the y height minus 262 pixels. Well, as you say, as you can see, I added this um, fifth field like thing, oh, sorry, sixth uh, field augment to the function, and that, you, uh, and that is the offset. Now this is the same principle as we have in the Astro game. So if we have the specifying on offset, we just set, the set like this. I want to uh, add uh, the step size times the length of the the num string times the step size like that. Mm, minus two again, I think. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it looks right. At least I think that. Uh, so let's see what yeah, what it will look like. Oh no. Uh, oh, of course, I'm so stupid. We of course want to uh, subtract, and <laughs> I don't know why I multiply that by the step. Oh, that's so stupid. But we of course want to have the offset here minus the length of the of the num string. But we now to work if we go back to uh, ten. Yeah, we did that. So. Let's just see what this look, what it will look like. Yeah, so that's good. So that's it. That's the f almost the final game. <laughs> we show uh, the final thing here. Let's just update the best field as well here. So as you can see, best is always zero here, but we want to set that to um, yeah. To the score if it's higher than the current best value, uh, so to speak. So if to do that, we can just go back up to the update method, and this is quite bad way to do it. But anyway, we want we just want to check if the, it if it is the score state, but we already do up here, actually. So anyway, oh not, oh. ah we can say else then. Then we just want to set the best field to the maximum value between the best with the current best value and the score value so that's it for the, this very simple demo uh, um, and uh, yeah so you can of course add some more fancy things to, this, to the game like uh, menu states and uh, other stuff like that as I said I did uh, figure out the position of all of the numbers and stuff like that earlier today and I also made a sort of uh, exact this version here but I add, add animation between the different states uh, to make it look a bit more finished and I won't go through it right, right here and, and, this, and the code is really messy but you can see if you add like some animation that will make the game look a lot better like this and it's quite easy to implement this uh, just Google for tweening, tweening effects, and uh, you should be able to make something similar to this. But for our version, we will only use this uh, sort of very basic graphics, uh, uh, graphical version like this. Yeah, so that's it, guys. We now have the finished game. So let's jump up to mobile and let's port this to. Android. So, see you in a moment, guys. Oh, uh, just one thing, guys. We need to implement uh, support for touches or to get the uh, coordinates from, uh, uh, yeah, uh, touches as well. 
not um, and that isn't the same way as we have done in the yeah with the mouse actually. So let's go back up here to the unpress method, and just below here we set the mx and m and y variables. We'll just make this simple uh, error checking here. So you say check if the mx is null or my is null. Like that, then we won't set the mx position to the event dot touches. Uh, the first touches, so zero, and the client x position. Since it will actually fill the complete um, canvas there. Uh, and uh, and y here for the y position. So for now, we, if we just reload the uh, what do you say? Reload this. Yeah, we won't get any errors. So that's been set. It works at least. So yeah, let's jump over to mobile. Before we do that though, uh, to make stuff a bit simple, I will start a, a HTTP server with uh, with this project in it so we can do some testing later on here. So, uh, so we just go to wherever you have saved your, your file. So if you're not that good with um, terminal commands, then you use the find your file, so you say flappy um, like that. And then you can just cd, press a space, don't forget the space guys, and then pull in the folder you want uh, you have your project in, press enter, and that will take you directly to that folder. And then you can, if you have um, Python installed or Node installed, I have uh, Node, so I will use uh, a simple uh, node server here, and if you want to install, and that this is just HTTP server like that, uh, and if you want to install that, just install node. You go to node.js.org and install node for your, your platform. And then you can uh, open a terminal and write sudo in uh, npm install g HTTP server like that. Press enter, typing a password. And that will install this HTTP server for you. Anyway, so I have this up there, so cheap works. Just go to a local host and the port, and yeah, it shouldn't be any changes. But we now can check the application on the on the mobile as well if you're on the same net Wi-Fi network as your computer. On. Anyway, that's it, guys. Let's jump over to mobile. Now. Yeah, so we are now on my mobile. Um, so let's check if uh, this game actually works. And if you, in the bad frame rate, and this recording is possible because I record this video in the same time as I show you this guys. So anyway, the first thing to maybe do is to just open up a web browser, I use Chrome for this particular example, and then go to the uh, router address of your uh, that your computer or on your Wi-Fi network. In my case, that's 192.168.0.11 and the port 880. Like that, and if you uh, go to that address and have set it up the HTTP server the way I did before here, you should uh, be able to test the uh, the game on your uh, uh, phone as well in the browser. And as you can see, the real bad uh, frame rate here, of course, because I record. Uh, one thing that's quite cool though is because we have set up the metadata the way we did in the index page, and we can add this. Uh, to the home screen uh, and uh, as a web application and uh, when we do that and open it it will have this real boring graphics now since we haven't uh, what do you say any icon data or something like that but you can open it up as a web application and as you can see we now don't have the URL bar or anything like that uh, and that should work on both iOS and on uh, Android Android. Uh, as you can see, it's, it looks quite well, good as a uh, uh, regular uh, web application like this. But we want to port this to an actual uh, app file. Uh, so in order to do that, let's just close this down. Uh, uh, go to the Play Store or App Store if you are on, um, or on uh, iOS. 
and just search for a cool JS, which is that's what we're going to use in order to build our or compile our application. So just go to the install the launch launcher application. Uh, and I, I already have mine installed, but I want to update to the latest version, see, because there's some uh, down here some uh, um, claim that the, the that the newest version doesn't work and stuff like that. So anyway, so you install that to your phone, and you can test how the app application will look like uh, when when after you have compiled it. It will take a while for it to start, maybe a bit longer than usual because I'm recording. Yeah, now it seems to be working here. So let's see. Yeah, so let's go to. Uh, draw app here, and you can test it inside of the launcher as well. So just go to the address and don't forget the uh, HTTP and uh, colon forward slash forward slash in order for this to work here. And just launch it as a canvas application like this. And you can see here I got real bad frame rate now since I'm recording, but otherwise you can get you will get 60 frames a second, uh, no problem. We could, could of course make this a bit better by implementing. Um, uh, some sort of delta timing and stuff like that, but we haven't bothered with that in this uh, series. But anyway, so now when you have tested it on all of those platforms, you know that know that uh, that game actually works. So let's go back to uh, browser and and compile the iOS application or, or sorry the Android application. See you see you on the desktop, guys. Yeah, so guys. We are now back on the desktop and let's actually compile our application. So it's quite easy. Just go to yeah, Google or whatever and search for Lude and uh Cocoon, sorry, Cocoon JS like that. And it should be the top link and uh, uh, when you are not are signed in, it looks something like this. And I should this have, should have uh, said this before, but you of course need to sign up in order to use the launcher application and other stuff like that. So just make a simple user here. Uh, I think you can figure it out by yourself. And then sign in to the uh, dev portal. Uh, so uh, I just sign in here. And it looks something like this. So you can uh, uh, go to the dev portal here. Uh, and here you have uh, your different projects and stuff like that. So let's just uh, delete the <laughs> test project I did here uh, and uh, stuff like that. So let's just create a new project and you will get be greeted by this page here. So here you can set an uh, application name of the project. So for example, let's just use Clappy JS and then for the bundle ID, you can use something, uh, whatever you want here. It said that it need to be a, a unique identifier. Uh, for the application, and um, yeah, they sort of uh, have uh, had this example here uh, on uh, our naming naming convention. So yeah, I just use that for uh, the bundle ID. Now let's t uh, type out a version here. So let's say we have the release candidate candidate uh, two version here, like that. This can kind of course call whatever version you want here, and here you say which modes the app should be. Uh, uh, what do you say? Supported, and we can support both portrait uh, and the portrait upside down, for example. And you choose how you want to uh, scale the application, and it doesn't really matter in our, our case here since we have the canvas fill the complete uh, screen, uh, so we can just keep it at uh, scale to fill uh, settings like that. Then just press create project. And that should give you uh, get you back to the uh, projects um, list or to the directly to the compile um, section. Uh, so, yeah, it just shows you. And it's the same if you go to the dev portal and just uh, press on your project right there. And here you set the general settings. And that was the things we did when we did the uh, initial setup here. Then here you can go to all of the different uh, iOS, oh sorry, the different uh, configuration files for all of the different platforms that you can support here. So you need to set like, yeah, the different launch images and uh, stuff like that for iOS and uh, the app icon, of course. 
but yeah, we won't we won't change that. We will just go for the, the regular versions here, and the same goes for Android. Here we have different uh, sized icons and stuff like that. But anyway, the important thing to go to right here is go to the compile project section or the compilation and on the compilation section. And here you just want to upload upload I should say uh, a zip file of the project. So just go to wherever you have saved your project. In our case it should be right here, right? Just right click it. Actually maybe we want to up uh, make it a zip file first here so uh, and let's just do that. So you right click on it and you can uh, say a compromise or whatever it's called. So com just make it to a zip file like that on uh, on Windows. I think it's uh, yeah it's something similar to this, but you can figure out how to make a zip file yourself, right? Anyway, so basically just choose the zip file and you should upload it like that. And then you choose for which target platforms you want here. So let's say you want it for iOS and for Android. So just uh, tick those two checkboxes and then choose the, the which um, which um, uh, sort of way you want to run the application or run using yeah whatever framework you want to run the application with. And I just use Canvas 2 here and then you choose the compiler version and I should go with the beta version. I haven't had any problem with this. And I just, just uh, tick the uh, the term I accept uh, the terms uh, blah 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 um, checkbox here and then you can compile your project and it will take some time and then they will send you a message that your uh, project have been compiled and I have already compiled the project so I won't do it again but it's as simple as just taking that box and press the compile project button so and it would take a while, maybe 10, uh, 20 to 30 minutes or something like that. Maybe 10 to 30 minutes, I don't know the exact um, time frame here, but something like that. And then they should uh, send you this uh, email here where you can download, uh, download your application. So, yeah. So when we have downloaded that, you should get a folder or something like this up to unzip the zip file. And then here you have the different versions for all of your platforms. And as we did this readme file here, that you can use, uh, see if you can center that one as well. Yeah, you could, uh, where it say how you run the different uh, versions of the files inside of the zip file here. So if you are on iOS, um, it, it says that you can't run it in the emulator uh, on the, on the on the, on, the, on the computer, but you so in order to build it for iOS, you need to have both a Mac and an iPhone or something like that, and and and, and device running uh, running iOS. But since I don't have that, I will go with the Android uh, version here. And as I say, I have two different Android versions. One that is uh, signed with uh, debug info. Uh, and uh, yeah, so the end of the debug version here is just for debugging purposes, and then the release version is the one you want to push to the apps uh, to the Play Store uh, when you release your uh, your um, application. Anyway, so from here it's quite simple uh, just to see if it works uh, for your particular platform. So if you have uh, Android. That's pretty simple, is to send yourself a new message uh, like this. So, and uh, yeah, and then you just, uh, what do you say? Uh, put this uh, file with you, uh, uh, sorry. And you just uh, send one of the files to yourself. I don't think it matter if you take the debug one version or the release version, it doesn't really matter. Just choose one and send it to yourself. And uh, let's go back to uh, my mod file and let's see if we can run this. So, see you in a moment, guys. Yeah, so we're now back on uh, on mobile. So, let's see if we can install the application and, and uh, see what it looks like when we run it. So, it's really simple. It's just go to your 
uh, email client. So I just go to Gmail, Gmail this time, and then just go to the message that you send your, uh, send to yourself, and then just press the download button here. Uh, it's there. Uh, yeah, and I've just uh, downloaded it before here. By the way, so and you will get 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 this message here if you have uh, set the settings that you can install. Uh, application from unknown sources. So just press the install button. Uh, hopefully it will work. No. Try again. Yeah, anyway, just press the install button and it will install. But I have already installed one version here, so I can just go to whatever, wherever it will save and just press the uh, uh, yeah, the app icon like that. And uh, let's see if we will start here. Yeah, and you'll get this powered by Lude splash screen. I think you can change that in the com uh, in the compilation. Yeah, in the project settings. But anyway, and here's the finished app. Yeah, and uh, as usual, the bad frame is, is because we are recording. But other than that, the game is running really smooth. We aren't recording like that. And the version I compile here is actually the one with the animations, but the process is similar for the other version as well. But anyway guys, so this is the end of this video tutorials, and I hope you've uh, learned something watching these videos, and I hope I see you in the next videos. So, thank you guys for watching, and see you next time. Bye!